All right, I've got 6.30. It's good to see everybody tonight. And uh, if you have your Bibles, turn with me to Psalm 103. We are starting our new program or a new schedule tonight for this. Uh, we'll have uh, 20 minutes of Bible study. We'll go over our prayer list for 20 minutes, and then we are going to break down in small groups and pray uh, for 20 minutes. So let's have a word of prayer. Father, thank you for the day. And God, I just thank you that you are our protector. Uh, God, I do pray for the weather. I know there's uh, stuff uh, above us and below us. And uh, God, I pray you protect uh, uh, churches and families and Lord, businesses. God, I just pray uh, things would calm down uh, in the weather department. Uh, God, I pray for Joanne Short. Uh, I know she is waiting for surgery and uh, God, I pray that you be with the surgeons, and uh, Lord, we just pray for a textbook surgery there tonight. Uh, God, we love you, and we just thank you for your word. God, it is yes, it is amen, and it is uh, so be it, God. So thank you that we can come together on a Wednesday night, and God, I pray you just be with our Bible study in a, in a perfect way, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, I want to talk to you tonight about the blessings of God. Uh, the blessings of God, and we are in Psalms 103, and uh, I'm not going to give you outlines uh, in this new uh, thing that we are doing, uh, our new schedule. Uh, we're going to take the Paul Walker look, and uh, we are uh, going to just open the Bible up and get after it. And so, but but I do want to give this to you. It's not an outline, but in Psalms 103, it speaks of three kinds of praise. And folks, I believe this with all my heart. Christians ought to be the happiest people on the face of this earth. We should be the happiest uh, because we have God, you know, and we, we have the Holy Spirit. We have, you know, assurance of salvation. And I'm going to go over a lot of that. But there's three kinds here of praise. Number one, personal praise will be the first five verses. A national praise is 6 through 10, and universal praise will be 11 through 14. And uh, we'll just see how far we can get uh, in our, out, or not in the outline, but in our scripture. The Bible says, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Now, if my name was Steve Stewart, I could have sang that. All right, that is a song, and I love that song. It's a song of praise. And when you think of Psalms, okay, there's two words that come to my mind. Well, really three, all right? A praise is the first thing that comes to my mind, all right? A second thing is worship, okay? Worship and praise go hand in hand. And the next one is from the word psalm. It's, it's a song, okay? And, and I hope you uh, listen to Christian music uh, I, I'm just telling you, uh, especially when I was sick, I, I listened to Christian music all the time. Uh, I remember I started out on 60 milligrams of steroids, and when you're taking that much, folks, you're not getting much sleep, all right? Uh, but I'd, I'd turn it on in the middle of the night, and man, that, those songs and those psalms would just soothe my soul and minister to my spirit. So we, as Christians need to be men and women that will praise the Lord, that will bless the Lord. And when it says, oh, my soul, uh, that's what praise does, okay? Uh, that's why I love our song service. Uh, you know, Brother Steve and the praise team do such a wonderful job preparing our hearts for the message. It gets our hearts ready uh, and, and so that we can hear the Word of God. Uh, you'll see, and, and, and we did it two or three times after a song, uh, when, when we finished the song this past Sunday, there were people clapping because the Holy Spirit was so strong in here. And so when you think about Psalms, you have to understand it is directly, uh, uh, you know, hooked to praise and to worship. And here's the deal, folks, you can worship anywhere. All right. There are times, uh, you know, uh, uh, I hear songs on the radio, feel that song that y'all sang, Almost Home. You know, James gave me that CD and I popped it in on the way home. 
And I'm telling you, I would just pray. I thought, man, this is a cool song. And people give me uh, songs, and I, I hear the radio, and these psalms just minister to our spirit. So bless the Lord, O my soul, and here's the part, all that is within me. Folks, we should praise with all of our heart and our soul and our mind. Praise. And, and you know, that's, that, that's anywhere you, you are, you can praise. Bless the Lord, verse 2, O oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Now, I am still in the workforce, and uh, some of you are, and some of you aren't. But when you get hired somewhere, the first thing you want to know, a couple of things, how much am I going to get paid and what are my benefits? All right? I mean, you don't just go in thinking, well, y'all just pay me whatever you want or, you know, whatever you do, that's fine with me. You know, they need to know and what benefits are, are, are things, you know, that, that you get because you, are, you work. And the thing with that, we're, and we do work for the Lord, and we're not being paid for it, you know, per se by wage. But folks, God gives us benefits in many, many different ways. You know what a, a ben one benefit we have? All right, our health. You think about that. You know, people, and I know people struggle with health and things, but if you, if you got out of bed today, if you walked today, if you got in your car and you drove today, you have fairly good health. So when we start thinking about benefits, it's kind of like listening, listing your blessings. I'm telling you, if we stopped right now and we just started saying, and, and I just randomly said, you know, give me a blessing, and, and everyone in here could give us a blessing. And we, we could, I would say within 10 minutes, we could get close to 50 blessings that we have. And that's what a benefit is. A benefit is a blessing, folks. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, forget not all his benefits. And then he lists six things here, the writer of this psalm. Number one, who forgives all your iniquities. Two big words in the middle of that sentence. Forgives. I don't know about you, but I could not live another day without the forgiveness of God. I mean... I know some of us have been Christians a long time, but it doesn't mean that we do not sin. I don't want to sin. I try to avoid sin, okay? But when I sin, God's forgiveness is there. And not only uh, the, the, that word, but the next word, all, forgives all your iniquities. All is inclu totally inclusive. Every sin that you have committed, God can and will forgive you of that sin. Now again, the consequences sometimes, you know, you just have to live with the consequences of the choices you make. But the spiritual connotation there is we have the forgiveness of sin. That's why I, I tell you all the time, your most important prayer is the one you pray at the end of the day. When you recall those things that where you did not please the Lord, and I know the beginning prayer is, is important also, but I'm simply saying, uh, 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins. And here's the word, cleanse us of all unrighteousness. We can start every day anew, just like you know, at night, we, it's like we erase the board of the sin because of forgiveness. And that is the first benefit. The second one is who heals your diseases. Raymond Sharp was telling me just a little while ago about, uh, uh, and I'm, you know, I don't have time to give the whole story, but basically a man went on vacation, was on a cruise, and had three strokes, okay? and was in a hospital in Washington State, and they had to even, he even had a brain bleed, and they had to do surgery on him. And Raymond said he talked, this was last Thursday, and he said he talked to him today, and he is up, out of bed, talking to people, and, and he just said, I was, it was unbelievable what happened. Now folks, you, I don't care what you say, that's a miracle. For somebody to survive three strokes and a brain bleed 
and be talking five days later. Who did that? God did it, folks. And God is still in the miracle business. So, and, and I know we, what we tend to do is we, we think about the, the things that are bad or th- th- about somebody who died. And we do. I, I mean, we, we need to, the Bible tells us to hurt with people who hurt, grieve with people who grieve. But I'm telling you, uh, you know, I've, we, we know stories of people that are healed of cancer totally and completely healed. We know stories of where they, you know, there was a spot, a good sized spot on somebody's lungs. And when they went in to, to check it out, you know, you know, it wasn't there, you know. And, and so uh, you can just uh, understand that God heals all your diseases. And I thought about that word all there, because even you think about this, folks, when a Christian dies, Is that not the ultimate healing? Isn't that? Because it it really is. You know, because the Bible says to be absent from the body is to be present from the Lord. So the second uh, benefit we have is heals your disease. Uh, The third one is found in verse 4, who redeems your life from destruction. And I, you know, y'all have heard a lot of my testimony, but I'm just telling you when I was in uh, you know, my senior year in high school, and especially my first two years in college, I'm telling you, I was a train wreck. All right. Didn't go to church uh, for almost two years. And, uh, you know, God used a couple of things to get my attention. And at age 22, I'd realized I'd already been working for the church, but realized that I never truly gave my heart and my life to Christ. What did he do, folks? He redeemed my soul. Let me put it this way, from hell. All right? Because I truly believe to this day, if I would have died before I was 22, I would have spent an eternity there. But folks, we all have been redeemed. All Christians, let me say it that way, have been redeemed. And we need to thank God for our salvation. And who crowned you, the four things, with loving kindness and tender mercy. And I love the phrase crowns you. When we think of crown, we think of royalty, okay? But here it is, it is just talking about, you know, uh, you know not, not necessarily royalty, but it's kind of like you can have an ice cream sundae, but when you put the cherry on top and then a little whipped cream over there, all right, it's even better. Okay, we're saved. We're going to heaven, but he crowns us with loving kindness. Folks, there is nobody that loves God or, or God loves. I mean, what I'm saying is, folks, his, let me rephrase it. His love is unconditional. Loving kindness. He is so good to us. He, is, he, he loves us and with tender mercies. And mercy is simply stated is not giving us what we deserve. Uh, to this day, folks, I, I still, you know, I, you know, it doesn't, I don't want to say bother me or anything like that, but I still do not believe I am worthy to go to heaven. I really don't. But thank be to God, it doesn't go by that. God goes by your relationship with Jesus Christ. So we have loving kindness and tender mercies, and, and that's benefits. Number five, who satisfies your mouth with good things. Now you're getting in my wheelhouse, all right? If you talk about food, and uh, again, you know, a lot of times, you know, you see the Bible talk about good things in, in Psalm and Proverbs. He compares it to honey. And you put honey on just about anything, and it tastes good, all right? And I don't pass up a good meal. I don't pass up a good place. I love it when somebody just says, man, that, that not, man, that was one of the best. Uh, Lori and I went on vacation and we ate at a place. And our, I can't recall her ever making this statement. She said, that was the best steak I ever ate. Now, man, I don't know about you, but that gets me excited, all right? I mean, we need, we need I, I know we focus on spiritual things, but also, you know, satisfies our mouth with good things, all right? Food, and not only food, compliments, okay? Um, I don't know. People are so kind to me. I, I'm, I'm serious in that. 
there are times that I think to myself, I wish I was as good as you think I am. <laughs> All right? Because, it, and I do, I have a heart for ministry. I love people. I want to work. Uh, I want to see people saved. I want that. And I understand all that. Uh, but, you know, when it, it's amazing what a compliment can do for a person. And it, this is something that I think we have lost, you know, in, in our world. You know, we don't compliment each other enough. We don't encourage each other enough. And then number six, the sixth benefit is so that your youth is renewed like eagles. Folks, I have, I, I truly, the older I get, the more I believe this. Age is just a number. We talked about that last Wednesday night. Caleb at 85 said, give me that mountain. And the deal about getting older, I know we have to check our health. We have to find out what's working and what's not working when we get up. All right. But with, with uh, age is also wisdom, folks, wisdom. And, and, you know, when you think of eagles, uh, one of the things I always remember about eagles is they, they don't fly under the clouds. They fly over the storms. And God gives us senior adults wisdom, and we can help young people so much, you know, uh, by giving them the right advice and, and realizing, you know, that, hey, you know, yeah, there are some days, and here's what I I'm finding out there's some days I don't feel like doing something, but if it has to do with ministry, many times God gives me a blessing or even sometimes a special blessing because I did something when I didn't feel like doing it. And you have to understand, folks, the Christian walk is not a thing of feeling. And there's nothing wrong. I mean, we have feelings, you know, we have happy feelings, we have sad feelings, and I understand all that. But our our joy is based on faith, not feelings. Okay, and I think that's so important. Now look at verse 6. And the Lord executes righteousness and justice for all who are oppressed. Just the way our world is, I know there are so many things that you're just sitting there thinking, I just can't believe they just said this, that. I can't believe this is going on here or this is going on there. But folks, you have to understand, God's in in control of everything. Nothing sneaks up on God, okay? Uh, things are going to work out at the end. I know there are sometimes, you know, I, I just shake my head sometimes when, uh, you know, I watch the news and, you know, see what comes out of people's mouths. But folks, God is King of kings. He's Lord of lords. He reigns. He is sovereign. He is almighty. And uh, he is going to get his will done. Verse 7, and he made known his ways to Moses and uh, acts to the children of Israel. And again, that was God's chosen people, and I understand that. But still, folks, you know, I, I hear people say, you know, America's a godless nation. Well, I, I know to an extent that is true. But to a, another extent, it's not true. There are a lot of, there are a lot of Christians in America. There are a lot of great churches in America. There are a lot of people in America that love Jesus and love God with all their heart, with all their soul, and all their might. And even with the Israelites, you know, they go along and they do good, they do good, and then they mess up. They do good, they do good, and they mess up. What do they sound like? The American Christian. <laughs> all right? But God's controlling that. God gives us power over uh, these things. And it says, and, and this is what I love, the Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in mercy. Folks, we all need the mercy of God in our lives. I love this phrase, slow to anger. You know what most men and women are? They're, it ain't slow to anger, all right? And we need to have that in our lives. One more verse here, uh, 1 Thessalonians 5, and I want to close with this. 1 Thessalonians 5, one verse, and it's verse 18. In everything, give thanks. Folks, we as Christians need to, you know, you can find good in just about anything. 
You can put a happy face on as quick as you can put a sad face on. In everything, give thanks. Now look at this, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. All right? God wants you to be happy. God gives us many benefits. God loves us with an unconditional love. God takes care of us. God answers prayers. Uh, you could just go on and on and on. And folks, God blesses his children. Father, thank you for this night. And God, I thank you for the psalm, the psalm of David. And God, I just thank you that uh, these six things that were mentioned in this scripture. And God, I just pray that you would just uh, watch over us. And God, I pray that we would understand how blessed we truly are. And God, I pray that we would express that also. Uh, God, I pray that we would let people know, man, God is good. I pray that uh, we would, uh, uh, you know, not dwell on the negative things in life but look at the positive things in life and all the things that you have done for us. God, you have answered so many prayers. You have saved so many souls. And God, I know there's still people that need to be saved, but God, I pray that our focus would be on you and, and on salvation and, and on sharing the gospel. God, I thank you that you can give us strength when we don't even have strength and give us love when it's hard sometimes to love. So God, please watch over us uh, as we go out the rest of this week. God, I pray that we would be men and women that blesses the Lord and, and just praises the Lord and worships the Lord, even on a Thursday, a Friday, and a Saturday. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.